you know, let's cover absolute and relative change. So in class, I gave you different words for what I we have here, and I'm going to do that again in this video. Given two quantities, it's two different values. Absolute change is just the ending quantity minus the starting quantity. You're just finding the difference. The answer is always going to have the same unit as the original quantity. Relative change is always answered in a percent. And it's just the absolute change divided by the starting quantity. But then you have to multiply by 100 to write it as a percent. All right. In class, instead of ending quantity, I said new. So it's the new value minus the old value. And so I used absolute change as new minus old. Relative change, same thing. Relative change is just new minus old divided by old. And then you take the whole thing and multiply it by 100 because it needs to be a percent, okay? The value of a car dropped from $7,400 to $6,800 over the last year. It asked you what percent decrease is this? So this is going to be a relative change because it's a percent change, all right? So we're looking for the relative change, which is new minus old. Again, feel free to use the other terminology, divided by old, and all of this is times 100. The new value, well, it dropped from $7,400 to $6,800. So this is the old value, and this is the new value. So relative change is $6,800 minus the $7,400 divided by the $7,400 times 100. Okay. So in my calculator, I'm going to go $6,800 minus 7,400 is negative 600. And then divide that by 7,400. I get negative 0 0.08108. Take that times 100. And I get negative 8.10H. Now, it didn't tell us what to round to. Um, the other thing you need to keep in mind is this is a percent. But this is a word problem. So it says, what percent decrease is this? All right, I'm just going to round this to the hundredths just because it's not as, there's no, there's, it doesn't ask me what to do. Um, it doesn't ask me what to, tell me what to round to. How's that? But it is a, is a question. What percent decrease is, is this? This is a decrease of, don't forget your 8.1%. So I've got a sentence. Please note that I didn't use a negative in my answer. I used the word decrease. If this was positive, I would have used the word increase instead of putting a positive 8.1. So this is a decrease of 8.1%. Complete sentence. Rounding, it didn't tell me which round to you correct units. The correct units in this case is going to be my percent symbol, but also using decrease instead of the negative symbol, okay? I did not do the next one because I'm not gonna have you do that on the exam and it is a nasty critter, let me tell you that right now. Um, example nine, this one I am gonna do. Suppose a stock drops in value 60% in one week, then increase in value the next week by 75%. Is the value higher or lower than where it started? Well, uh, the only way to check this is to create something. So what if I said I wanted to buy a stock for $100? Okay. If the stock drops in value by 60% one week, that's taking that $100 and subtracting 60% of the $100. Um, to work this, I have to change this percent to a decimal by dividing by 100. 
And now I can multiply. And now I can subtract. So the value of the stock after the first week is 40 bucks. All right, this is week one. Week two, the value the next week, week two, uh, increases by 75%. Well, what increases by 75%? This value is the new starting value, okay? And it's increasing, so plus 75% of 40. So this is 40 plus, change this to a decimal, times 40. I'm gonna whip out my calculator and go 0.75 times 40 is 30. 40 plus 30 is 70 dollars. So after two weeks, the value of the stock went from 100 to 40 to 70. The question is, is the value higher or lower than where it started? The value is lower than where it started. Using this concept, I actually create, um, I'll show you, percentage increases and decreases, and we'll do that here in just a moment. I do want to do this you try, because you're gonna have something like this. Let me see if this is the one we're gonna have. Um, mm, mm, mm. Okay, yeah, we're gonna, let's do this one. We're gonna calculate the absolute and relative increase. So the US federal debt at the end of 2001 was $5.77 trillion, and it grew to $6.20 trillion by the end of 2002. Okay, so 2001, it was 5.77. In 2002, it was 6.2 trillion. All right. Then at the end of 2005, it was 7.91 trillion. And in 2006, it was 8.45 trillion. All right. And it says to calculate the absolute and relative increase for both of these year models. Which year saw the largest increase in federal debt? Okay. So the years make it nice because then I can know what the new and the old is. The new version for 2002, this would be new and this would be old. This would be new because it's newer and this would be old. So it wants us to find the absolute change and absolute is just new minus old, just subtracting the two. So 6.2 minus 5.77. is 0.43 trillion dollars. All right, we'll do the same thing over here. Absolute change, new minus old. 8.45 is the new, the old is 7.91. And that's 0.54. So I can answer the question regarding absolute. The ask which is the largest increase in federal debt. I can answer this one that 2005 to 2006 saw the larger increase, saw the larger increase, absolute increase. Okay, now we're going to, in federal debt, if you want to put that, the second one is they want us to find the relative increase, and relative is just the new minus old, which we've already calculated, divided by the old, and then all of that times 100, so we can change it to a percent. 
So the new minus old, I've already done for this one. I'm going to use this and plug it in for this. 0 0.43 divided by my old, which up here I said old is 5.77. That's why I like to label everything, times 100. So 0.43 divided by 5.77 is 0 0.047, but we need to multiply that by 100. And we get 7.45. And this is a percent because it's a relative change. Relative is always a percent. Now let's do the relative for 2005, 2006. We've already got the new minus old, 0 0.54, and then divided by old, which is 7.91, and multiply that by 100. So 0.54 divided by 7.91, And then we're going to multiply that by 100. It's 6.8. I'm going to go ahead and round that to a 3 because the 6 is larger than 5. So 6.83%. All right. So who had the largest relative increase? 2001 to 2002 had the larger relative increase. I didn't ask by how much. Um, had I asked by how much, you would have had to subtract the two values to provide that, but I don't ask for that. And that's it for that answer. All right, example 10. No, not doing that. That's not gonna be on your exam. Example 11 is, in fact, this is a big one. This is going to be on your exam. Not this exact problem. I know we all always ask that question, crazy kids. All right, so a politician's support increases from 40% of the voters to 50% of the voters. When it asks me to describe the change, I want to find both the absolute and relative change. I'm gonna give you new terminology here. I'm providing it in class as well, but you're going to have to answer this question in particular a specific way. All right, so your absolute change is your new minus old. Nothing changes there. <clears throat> it increases from 40%, which is your old, to 50%, your new. So 50% minus 40 is equal to 10. Here's the problem. That is not 10%. The only way that could be 10% is if we found the relative change. That's not the relative change. So we have to answer this one a specific way because the unit is percentage. Up until now, I have told you that your answer for absolute is always the same answer in the units as it is for the original units. It's not in this case only. This is a specific thing. It is on your exam. Please make sure you pay attention here. When I absolute answer the absolute change, I'm going to say the absolute change, and I'm going to say it increases, positive also, increases by 10, here's the magic words, percentage points, percentage points. So the politician support increases not by 10 percentage, but by 10 percentage points. And you'll hear more about that as you get closer to the election. All right, now the relative change. This one is going to be answered in a percent. And this is just your new minus old divided by old and all of that times 100 to change it to a percent. Okay, this is gonna be a percent. So the new minus old we already calculated divided by the old and my old is 40. And then we're going to take that and multiply by 100. 10 divided by 40 is 0 0.25. Multiplying by 100 is 25. Now, this one is a percent. So the increase or the, the relative change increases by 25 
percent. So the support for this politician, you could have said that too, the support for this politician increased by 10 percentage points or the support for this politician increases by 25%. Please note those are not the same thing, okay? If you have any questions on this, please let me know. I'm happy to help. All right, 4.4 is the last section for this. Percent increase and percent decrease. So this one is a little bit different. So in the previous section, we calculated the relative or percent change. Now we're gonna use the idea of percent change to determine a future value of the quantity, all right? And I, I'm gonna give you formulas for this as well. In the news, you hear tuition is expected to increase by 7% next year. If tuition this year is $1,200 per quarter, what will it be next year? So to do this problem, you're gonna to wanna to know how to handle future value. So I try to use future value as my, I'm gonna use it, future value. And I'm gonna give you a formula. It's A1 plus or minus R, all right? So A is the starting value for initial quantity, starting for initial value. And R is your percent in decimal form, in decimal form, okay? Now, you have to decide, is that starting quantity increasing or decreasing? If it's increasing, you're going to use the plus. If it is decreasing, you're going to use the subtraction. Nope, decreasing. All right. So we have in the news, you hear tuition is expected to increase. Boom. That tells me right there that I'm going to use the plus sign. So my future value for this quantity is A1 plus R is what I'm going to be using. The future value, A is the initial value, which is $1,200 per quarter. One plus, the only other thing I need to put in here is what is my rate in decimal form? Remember, when you take a percent to a decimal, you take the 7% and you divide it by 100 and get rid of the percent symbol. So that's 0.07. 1200 times 1.07 is going to give us our value. It is 1,284. So tuition will be dollar sign 1284, $1,284 dollars next what next year. You could say per quarter, however you want to say it, per quarter. Okay. The next one, a TV originally priced at $869 is on sale for 35% off. So if it's on sale, the future value for that TV, one plus or minus R, the initial value we know is 869, but are, is that value from 869 increasing? or decreasing. Because it's on sale, that means it's not going to be $869. It's going to be less than that. So therefore, it's decreasing. And you're going to want to use the subtraction symbol. So the future value for this one is you're going to use A1 minus R. And the future value is $869 is the original value. 1 minus the percent in decimal form divided by 100 and we get 0 0.35. So future value is 869 times 0 0.5678, so 65. All right, so I'll just show you one minus, nope, one minus 0.35, and I got 0.65. I'm gonna multiply that times 869, and I get that the TV's value so they want to know the sale price. The sale price uh, for the of the TV of the TV is dollar sign five six four eight five five sixty four eight five five hundred sixty four dollars and eighty five cents. So 
Word problem, complete sentence, correct units, correct rounding. Remember, money always rounds to the penny, which is in the hundredths place. So always for American money, you're going to round to the penny. Oh, no, I do go to 4.5. Forgot about that. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do these two as well, just to say that you have these extra, extra help. The bill for dinner after tax was 85.20. You decide to leave a 15% tip, calculate the total amount paid. So this is future value is A1 plus or minus R. So for this one, the initial amount is $85.20. All right. Are we adding to that value or are we subtracting from that value? So when you go to the restaurant and you're eating dinner and you get your bill comes, you leave an extra tip on top of the amount of the bill for the waitress or server, sorry. So that means we're increasing the amount of money that we're paying for this dinner. We're increasing it by 15%. 15% change to a decimal is 15 divided by 100, which is 0.15. So my future value is gonna be 85.20 times 1.15, and that's 97.98. So calculate total amount paid. You will pay dollar sign, get our unit in there, $97.98 for dinner. Clothing store is having a 15% off sale. All right, determine the sale price for an item that was originally priced at $74. Future value, A, one plus or minus R. Future value, the A is going to be the $74. Now, is that $74 going up? Is it increasing or is it decreasing? So it's a sale item. So that means we're not going to pay $74 for the item or even more, we're going to pay less. So it's one minus R. And R is, it's a 15% off and we've already calculated that that's 0 0.15. So future value is 74 times 0 0.85. And that's $62.90. You will pay or the sale price for an item um, is, oh, you will pay dollar sign, $62.90 for the item. I've got a sentence form, correct rounding, because I went to the hundreds place for money, and I've got my unit of a dollar sign. You purchased a new phone in Scottsdale, which has 7.95% sales tax. The total cost, including tax for your new phone is $505.40. What was the pre-tax price? This one's different. I'm still gonna set it up as future value is A1 plus or minus R, but we're gonna handle it a little differently because they're telling us what our future value is, what the value of the phone is that you're paying later. And you're paying, they're telling us that this is the whole thing. So let me show you how I would set this up. Um, future value is equal to A is the, the pre-tax price. So this is your pre-tax price right here. Pre, that's what we're going to be looking for. And then one, and they're increasing it because it's pay or paying taxes. How much tax are we paying? 7.95. Got to change that to a decimal. 0 0.0795, do not round that. Just, be, just go with what it is. Do not put 0 0.08, that will be wrong. Um, okay, so, but we're also knowing that this is value with tax. And that's $505.40. I'm gonna combine these two here. All right, we're looking for the pre-tax price. That is our A, the initial value. So we're going to have to isolate A all by itself on one side. Who's attached to A and how? 1.0795 is attached to A by multiplication. 
The inverse or opposite of multiplication is division. So we can divide this side by that number just to get A by itself because anything divided by itself is one. But what we do to one side, we have to do to the other because there's this cute little equal sign here that means that we have to keep everything equal. So 1.0795, I'm gonna take $505.40 and divide it by 1.0795. And I get 468, I'm gonna write this down, 468.1797, that's right, 1797. All right, the question here is what was the pre-tax price? So the reason I wrote down all this number is so that I can go over the fact that you need to make sure, one, you give me a sentence, two, you give me correct rounding, and three, you give me the correct units. This problem is perfect for that to make sure you do that. So I'm going to say the pre-tax, goodness, pre-tax price is, here's my unit, dollar sign, golden, $468 and, well, as a one, but I need to round to the penny, which is my rounding digit. My test digit is the nine. It's five or greater. So I have to add one to my test digit. And that is my answer. The pre-tax price is $468.18. Last piece of this. Exponential function. I thought we already did exponentials. Nope, we've already done this. Okay, so that was it. We've already done exponential functions, so you are good to go. Let me know what questions you have, and I will see you in class.